So, Dragon Age Veilguard is another victim to the war that AAA publishers have made on RPGs over the past 20 years. Veilguard is probably the worst example we've seen of Electronic Arts doing this, and other publishers, since the days when Interplay went bankrupt, and Fallout got sold off to Bethesda, and Bioware got sold off to Electronic Arts, we've seen a steady, steady decline amongst all of these franchises in the complexity of their RPG systems. Maybe if the game started its development after the explosion in the popularity of Baldur's Gate 3, we would have gotten something different, but we haven't. And hopefully this is the final last gasp of AAA publishers trying to destroy RPG systems, because this, ladies and gentlemen, is not an RPG. Forbes comes out and says it very clearly, with a lovely title. Dragon Age, the Veil Guard, puts an end to tactical combat once and for all. But how did we get here? What has happened over the past 20 years that even Dragon Age no longer has tactical combat? Well, to do that, we're going to need to talk about a myth that AAA gaming studios have been perpetuating about RPGs over the past two decades. So let's get into it. If you've been gaming for a long time, you'll know that RPG systems have been becoming more simplified since really around the 2010s, if not before. And if you, like me, love complex RPG systems and you love to, you know, complain futilely about things on the internet, the explanation goes sort of like this. Games need broad appeal in order to make enough money to refund the cost of the development and your average normie does not like complex RPG systems, and games that have them lack broad appeal and are financially and critically prone to failure. The thought being that Dave who fixes trucks for a living is definitely too stupid to figure out how to assign enough strength points to wear his armor. How much of this is a reflection on Dave and how much of this is a reflection on the people that run publishers like Electronic Arts, I'll leave up to you. Now, I used to believe this myth, though, in general. When Dragon Age Origins came out, I really, really loved that game. And I could see how it was striking a balance between being an RPG and being accessible. It's like sword porn. It's for the enthusiast. You see the enemy, you're thinking, like, how do I enact this grand strategy to make these characters do as much friggin' damage as I can? And then once you charge in there, the battle's just a swirling melee. You've got positioning, moving your rogues around behind so they're just jamming their swords into kidneys. You have your warriors just holding that line, and your mage is kind of holding the back line, just raining death upon your foes. When Mass Effect also simplified its systems for ME2, I thought it actually improved the game in many ways, not having to micromanage my ammo types across all my characters. I was a little bit annoyed when Oblivion and Skyrim removed the RPG elements from Morrowind and Daggerfall, but by the time we reached Bioware's later entries of Dragon Age 2 and Dragon Age Inquisition, I was really beginning to fall out of love with all these kinds of games. Complex RPGs like Pillars of Eternity, Underrail, or Wasteland became niche indie hits. And this persisted with the idea that RPGs with these more complex systems are just never going to be blockbuster titles in the gaming industry. And it turns out that this was a self-fulfilling prophecy. In 2023, Boulder's Gate comes out of early access, wins game of the year, and everyone and their mother is playing it, literally. Out of the people I've known who started gaming since 2023, Boulder's Gate is the game every last one of them started with. The myth propagated for years by the fans of these AAA studios and their management has turned out to be false. People love RPGs with complex systems. Give them to us and we will give you our money. Sword porn, it's for the enthusiast. And this brings us to Dragon Age Veilguard, a very watered down RPG, if an RPG at all. The combat looks to be even more action focused than its predecessor Inquisition. And while that game had some good aspects, it continued to nuke the RPG options from DA1 and DA2. We can see if we focus on this character on screen, we have a miserly three abilities, a potion bar to swap between different potions and a dodge button. You can control other characters by giving them orders, as I previously said in the Mass Effect style. To my eye, it looks like it's been built on the combat system from Dragon Age Inquisition and shifted entirely to a dodge-based action game, inspired almost by things like Devil May Cry. And I cannot help but think that this is an absolutely foolish decision, now based on a myth that persisted when the game was developed that we now just know is false. The graphics, on the other hand, are beautiful, at least in my opinion. They've got this new, dark, edgy style we've been seeing in a lot of games at the moment. 
The art style, though, matters to me more than the graphics themselves, and I've got to say it reminds me a lot of games like Lies of P, and I really miss the good, old, more gritty and realistic style of the original Mass Effect and Dragon Age Origins, though that might just be the boomer emo me talking who likes everything to be slightly PlayStation 3 gray. On the positive side, it's been confirmed that Dragon Age The Veil Guard will be mission-based and not open world, because if we've learned anything from Dragon Age Inquisition and Anthem, it is that Bioware are not good at building open world games. The missions of both Dragon Age Inquisition and Anthem were actually pretty good, and taken on their own, I'd rate the games very highly. The problem was the mediocre and boring open world content. While studios like Rockstar Games are amazing at building open worlds, it is not a strong point of Bioware. Bioware tells stories. They're not world builders in that physical sense, or are they good at creating engaging minigame systems? Their game director, answering Demi Williams of Tech Radar, said, yeah, so it is a mission-based game, Burst said. Everything is hand-touched, hand-crafted, very highly curated. We believe that's how we get the best narrative experience, the best moment-to-moment -moment experiences. However, along the way, these levels that we go to do open up. Some of them have more exploration than others, alternate branching paths, mysteries, secrets, optional content you're going to find and solve. So it does open up, but it is mission-based, highly curated game. This is the most positive thing I have to say about Dragon Age Veilguard, because at least they are allowing Bioware to focus on what they're good at, which is making narrative-based content. However, this doesn't get around that since Origins, the series has really lacked a consistent narrative, artistic direction, and I know it can sound too poetic, but spiritual direction. I don't know what Dragon Age as a franchise is. It's clearly not meant for old school RPG fans like me anymore. They've made that very clear with both their choice of art style and the combat system. But why do EA think they will find success with a newer, younger audience who've never experienced the franchise before? Dragon Age Inquisition was released 10 years ago. The entire decision-making process reeks of electronic arts and their attitude of always reaching for the broadest audience possible and then failing over and over again. We've seen them do it when they forced Bioware to make a looter shooter. And now I think we're going to see it with Veilguard with them forcing Bioware to make an action game that is unlikely to play to their own developmental strengths. I'm 99% sure it's going to be a better game than Anthem, which is not hard. And without a bloated and boring open world, it will probably turn out to be better than Inquisition as long as there's more of a focus on story. We'll have to wait and see. But in the end, the real tragedy is that Dragon Age Veilguard is another victim to the war AAA studios have made on RPGs over the past two decades. Rest in peace, Dragon Age. I'm hopeful that in the future, now after the success of Boulder's Gate 3 and the continuous success of other small indie titles that also have complex RPG systems, that in the future, maybe we'll see a return to RPGs that are more successful. Divinity 3 is probably going to come out within the next five years, and that's sure to be a reasonably large hit, even without the IP weight of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro lurking behind it. Hopefully, this is the final victim of a franchise that used to be an RPG slowly eaten away by these AAA game devs. If you enjoy commentary and the odd rant and review of RPG and RPG gaming, give me a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys all in the next video.